In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> Welcome to our spiritual exercises program of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And as always, let's pray. Let's ask the Blessed Mother, who is the Mother of God, the Mother of the Church, and the Mother of all of us to be with us. Let's ask Mary to pray with us, and let's Mary to pray for us, and ask Mary to give us, through our prayers, the gift of gifts, the Holy Spirit, as well as the presence of the angels, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And of course, let's invite our spiritual director to be with us. The spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. Let's beg humbly, but fervently, that the Holy Spirit will be with us to accompany us during our conversation and to be with all of you as you undertake your wonderful enterprise of the spiritual exercises, which are trying to go deeper and deeper in your prayer life. Let's beg the Holy Spirit with humility, fervor, and trust that the Holy Spirit will accompany on us on our journey to heaven, as we sing. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made, to fill the hearts which thou hast made. O Comforter, to thee we cry, thou heavenly gift from God most high, thou fount of life, and fire of love, the soul's anointing from above. The soul's anointing from above. Praise be to thee, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit, Three in one, and may the sun on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit flow, the gifts that from the Spirit flow. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good news, very good news. Archbishop Jose Gomez has announced that on May 1st, which is about a week away, next week. He, as well as the bishops, are going to be consecrating our country to Mary, the Mother of the Church. What beautiful, wonderful, consoling news is that in a formal way, our country is going to be consecrated to Mary, the mother of the church. The Vatican Council, which concluded in the 60s, started by 23rd and finished by Pope Paul VI, 
proclaim Mary in the documents of Vatican Mater Ecclesiae, which is the Latin for Mary, the mother of the church. Mary is the daughter of God the Father. Mary is the mother of God the Son. Mary is the mystical spouse of the Holy Spirit. And Mary is, of course, Mary is your mother from the cross. When Jesus said to St. John the Evangelist, Woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. From that moment, the beloved disciple took Mary into his home, took Mary into his heart. And by that gesture, Jesus gave Mary as the mother of all of us. So rejoice in that. So in this Easter season, I invite all of you to renew your love, your confidence, your devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the words of St. Louis de Montfort, who gave us true devotion to Mary, that wonderful text of consecration to Mary. St. Louis de Montfort says that Mary is the quickest, easiest, shortest pathway to God himself. So I've said this more than once. These spiritual exercises are very Marian exercises. Yes. I repeat, these spiritual exercises are very Marian exercises. St. Denise Loyola in the cave of Manresa, when he was praying, he had a vision and he saw the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she told him to write. He pulled out his pen and he started to write. And the spiritual exercises come from heaven, but they come through the instrumentality of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary's powerful. Mary's powerful. In the life of Osama Galgani, a woman, secular, passionist, mystic, she begged Jesus to convert this poor sinner. And Jesus said, this man has flaunted all of my graces. But she kept begging. And Jesus said to her, Jem, I'm sorry, but this man has rejected all the graces I've given. So Jemma kept praying for the conversion of this poor sinner. Jesus appeared and said, Lord, Jem, I'm sorry. He's rejected my graces. He has a very hard heart. Emma said, well, Lord, if that's the case, I will ask your mother. And Jesus said, in that case, I cannot resist. So the sinner was converted. The sinner was converted through Christ. But Mary was the pathway by which this sinner was converted. So I'm saying this, uh, my friends, because as a great writer Favre says, where there is little success is because there's little Mary. Mary is the quickest, easiest, shortest path to Christ. So make sure, make sure that in these spiritual exercises, you invite the Blessed Virgin Mary to pray with you, to pray for you, and to be with you. I cannot insist too much. As an oblate of the Virgin Mary, my charism is to promote Ignatian spirituality, the spiritual exercises, but my charism also is to promote Marian devotion. And I think there's a harmony between both of these to get close to Christ is to get close to the Blessed Virgin Mary the last words that Mary have 
we have recorded in the Gospels are from John chapter 2 on the wedding feast of Cana. And the last word, Mary, do whatever he tells you. So your meditation today is going to be a repetition of the sin of Cain and Abel, Genesis chapter 4. And the consequences of sin we talked about yesterday. But the first part of our conversation is I'd like to offer you five different tips or helps so that you can grow in your prayer life. Because these spiritual exercises, more than anything else, they are an encounter with God through prayer. So many of my teachings, I always try to give some help, some catechesis on prayer. Because you might know the technique, but you might be lacking something. And you might find that you're kind of floundering with you a big a good month now and maybe you're experiencing some obstacles some struggles some aridity maybe some desolation and that's normal so if you're going through a little bit of aridity and dryness and desolation maybe temptations if you don't have that that's abnormal so don't feel bad or discouraged because you might be struggling now and then other days you probably get a lot of consolation but the key, as I said many times, are the words of Teresa of Avila. We have to have a determined determination, a determination to never give up prayer. Teresa of Avila says the key is uh, perseverance. However, we have to have some type of teaching education on prayer. So I'd like to give some tips. Okay, the first is this, get in the habit of reading on prayer, okay, the important to read on prayer. Often it happens we don't know how to pray because we've never been catechized, we've never really been taught on what prayer is. Now, I could give you many, many, many different textbooks. I'm looking in my, in my library now, and I think I'll, I'll bring out one textbook for you. Excuse me. It's this textbook. It's the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Catechism of the Catholic Church. This, uh, this cat, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, was probably Pope John Paul II's great accomplishment in his 26 years. Of course, it took many years, and he had the help from a commission in Cardinal Ratzinger, who went on to become, of course, Pope Bent the Sixteenth. So the Catechism of the Catholic Church can really help you to get to know prayer. The Catechism has four parts. Any good Catechism has four pillars. The dogmatic, the moral, the sacramental, and the prayer. The dogmatic explains the creed. The moral explains the Ten Commandments. The sacramental, the channels of grace, which are the seven sacraments. But the last part of the Catechism of the Catholic Church is on prayer. And honestly, I've read quite a bit. I could read more, and I have to read more. But of all my readings on prayer, I would say the Catechism of the Catholic Church is uh, on the top of the list. I say the top three greatest spiritual writings on prayer. You probably have to add also Teresa of Avila and her writings, The Way of Perfection, The Interior Castle, as well as her life. I have my 
France to the sales, interested to the devout life, but as a compendium, as a summary, as a th synthesis of prayer in a few numbers because it's the shortest part of the catechism. Catechism of the Catholic Church is a must. So this is uh, from the Liberia Editrice Vaticana. There are any any bookstore you can get, it's still a classic. Okay, that's number one. Number two is, is this. All of you are doing these spiritual exercises with me, on the exercises with me. In the past, I've had this program for about 14 years. We insist on this point. We insist on this point. That to advance in your spiritual life and your spiritual life has to be marked by a growth in your prayer life it's indispensable that every one of you every one of you have to have some type of spiritual direction i repeat if you want to grow in your spiritual life you all must have some type of periodic spiritual direction in your life. It's a must. Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, Francis Xavier. Uh, for example, take 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 the two most famous images that were approved by the Catholic Church. After uh, the three, Our Lady Guadalupe, but also the Sacred Heart here. And then we have the Divine Mercy image that I've showed you many times. Jesus appeared to two saints, St. Margaret Mary Ella Cook, as well as St. Faustina Kowalska. If St. Margaret Mariella Cook did not have a spiritual director, it's a beautiful image, isn't it? She did not have a spiritual director. They thought she was crazy. She had thought that she was hysterical, that she had a very vivid imagination. They thought that she was making it up. The same thing with respect to St. Faustine. If she did not have good spiritual direction, they would have thought that she just is making this up. But because they both had spiritual direction, these apparitions were approved by Holy Mother Church. You're not saying that all of you are going to start to have apparitions and visions starting tonight. You probably probably won't happen, no? If you do, make sure you get a good spiritual director. Because my friend Hopefully you're listening to me. To grow in your prayer life, prayer is the most easy thing, but the most difficult. It's the easiest thing because we can pray anytime, any place, use whatever words we want. Prayer, we can pray. God is always open to entering into dialogue with us. There's never a moment where God is too busy. We're too busy for God, but God is never too busy for us. That's true. But as you grow in your spiritual life, the temptations become much more subtle. If you don't have an adequate spiritual director, very easy for the devil to pull you off the track or for you to give in to discouragement. Let me tell you a story. The Curie of Ars, who I've mentioned several times, here's a picture of the Curie of Ars. The Curie of Ars, at the end of his life, he was spending close to 15 hours in the confessional every day. Very holy man. The year the priesthood, Pope Ben the Sixteenth, took him as the patron saint. A priest in the priesthood. 
and very holy man, man of deep prayer, penance, apostolic zeal, love for the souls, love for Christian. But he had this thought that he had to leave the parish so he can dedicate the rest of his life to prayer and penance in a monastery or some secluded place. And he got up to leave and then the people brought, brought him back. But the thought kept tormenting him. He had to leave to do penance for his many sins, which were really very few. The people brought him back. He got up the third time when he was heading away from his parish. It dawned on him that was the devil. That was the devil who was disguised as an angel of light. Who would have ever thought that the devil would tempt someone to pray? That's exactly what it was. The devil was tempting this holy man of God with this thought. Look, you're saving the whole world, but you're going to hell in a, in a basket. Because all the saints, they prayed much more than you did. If you don't spend more time in prayer, maybe you're saving all of France, but you're going to hell. Now, if someone as holy as the Curie of ours could be deceived and tricked by the enemy. How about us? Say something personal. I have a I have a spiritual director. And I try to see my spiritual director downtown every month. Set up an appointment, drive downtown. Takes about an hour to get in there, an hour back. Downtown LA. And after my spiritual director welcomes me and pray right away for well, the first 10 15 minutes i'm opening up and i'm telling him my spiritual director how i'm going in my own prayer life and i find that to be very helpful and i've been doing my holy hour for decades now been a priest for almost 34 years next month. So I have a little experience. But I recognize, even though my years, my, 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 my degrees, my titles, my pastoral experience, I still recognize that I have blind spots. You know, my friends, we can't see it. We can't see ourselves as we really are. There are three visions of us. The vision we have, the vision the other has, the vision that God has of us. There are three different visions of the one, of ourselves, and the, the one that's true is the vision that God has, and our spiritual director helps us to see how God is working in us. So I hopefully this is these these uh, points of advice are helpful because in this spiritual exercise program, we don't have a certain now and then check up on prayer in general see you know you know it's easy to become discouraged and after sin itself the worst thing is discouragement let me ask you in the past month have any of you become discouraged let me ask the question have you become discouraged you probably have you probably felt why is this coronavirus, pandemic, why is this? Why are the churches closed? Why do I have to have talks online instead of in the church? Why, why, why? No. And maybe because of that discouragement, it could be the devil behind that, maybe you've skipped your holy hour. Maybe you're cutting corners. Maybe you're not praying with the first that you should be praying. Maybe you're not open to the lights and inspirations. Maybe the Holy Spirit is nudging you in one direction and you're running the other direction. You got me? So, uh, spiritual director. Some of you maybe, some of you hopefully have a spiritual director, but if not, hopefully as a result of these exercises that we're doing, that you'll be able to, in time, get a spiritual director. Very important. Because 
As St. John of the Cross says, he says, he who has himself as a director has an idiot as a disciple. Well, pretty strong language. John of the Cross says, we cannot direct ourselves properly. You got me? Okay, good. Number three. Now, those are just um, logging in. We're into our spiritual exercises. Your meditation will be the, the triple sin. It'll be the sin of Cain and Abel. And you see the consequences of sin. The talk I gave yesterday was an explanation of the, the five different consequences of sin taken by John Paul II. The theological, the social, the personal, the ecclesial, and the cosmic. I spent a whole hour because I thought it very important to give you a certain catechesis on sin and the effects of sin. Today I'm giving some ideas on how we can, um, how, how we can bolster, strengthen our prayer life. So the third is this, and it'll be by means of a, a little anecdote in my life, and I think you'll understand this. One occasion, I um, wanted to give some exercise, so I was taking um, a little walk on one of the bike trails there in Lakewood. It was a nice uh, spring day, and I was taking a ni nice walk, really enjoying myself, relaxing, thinking about God. And all of a sudden, as I was walking on the bike trail, I noticed in front of me, as I walked, that there was a, a black bird, pretty big, I think it was a crow, that as I got closer to the black bird, the black bird did not take flight. And... I was thinking, well, hmm, maybe I'm a modern St. Francis of Assisi. Maybe I'm, I have a certain latent charismatic Franciscan gift that I'm discovering right now. But it wasn't because he had this Franciscan charismatic gift. The reason why is because the black bird had a broken wing. And having a broken wind, it was kind of hopping along, but it couldn't fly. And then as it got closer, some of the blackbirds started to descend upon me, and, and I flew away because they wanted to defend their little wounded birdie. And I made a, an application to our lives. All of us are called to be that bird in the sense all of us are called to fly high in our spiritual life. We're called to be a John of the Eagle. We're called to be a hawk. We're called to be an eagle. And many of us, instead of being eagles, we're turtles. No offense, but we're plodding along a very slow pace. We hide in our shell. We really never advance in our spiritual life. And the reason being is that we're not flying high because we're flying with one wing. Try to imagine you go to an airport and the pilot says, we only have one wing as we're flying petrified just doesn't work now what are the two wings that we must have in our spiritual life we want to advance it's the wing of prayer and it's the wing of penance yes I repeat it's the wing of prayer and it's the wing of penance. Father Al Hall, in entering into Lent, he said, we have three things to live out Lent. We have to go up, 
Go in and go out. I like that. Go up. Prayer. Go in. Penance. Go out. Um, uh, Jesus there in the desert, he spent 40 days and 40 nights. He was praying, but also Jesus was practicing penance. It was 40 days and 40 nights in which Jesus was fasting. Now we're in the Easter season, it's true. The Easter season is still the time in which we're rejoicing over the risen Lord. And we're going through certain meditations that are somewhat challenging and related to sin, the sin of the angels, the sin of Adam and Eve, the sin of uh, Cain and Abel, the sin of the Tower of Babel. We're going through some challenging. But if we want to fortify our prayer life, we should get in the habit of practicing some type of mortification. Some type of mortification. What does that mean? Some type of self-denial. It's not that you have to kill yourself. It's not that all of you are called to be another Curie of ours. But learn how to deny yourself. Because when we deny ourselves of our own egotistic or sensual desires, then we open up our heart to God. One might this. Instead of praying always in your armchair, maybe start off on your knees for two or three minutes. Another might be, okay, instead of putting salt and pepper on your meat, okay, I'm going to put salt on it. Another one might be, you're tempted to talk when someone is speaking. Let the person finish his conversation. Another one might be tempted to complain because of this coronavirus pandemic. Instead of complain, pray God. Uplifting. Instead of Sleeping in, get up. All of these acts of penance serve to fortify our will and to open us up to God's divine presence in prayer. So that's the third suggestion. So remember the analogy I give you. As that bird, that crow, was never able to take flight because the crow only had one wing. We want to fly high in the fly high and soar in this spiritual life. Like an eagle, you can pray, but some type of penance. Remember the analogy. Either we're eagles or hawks, or we can become turtles. You're called to be an eagle in the spiritual life. You're called to fly high. Fly high into the heights of the spiritual life. Okay, the fourth suggestion, and I can see this in conjunction with the third, is you want to advance in spiritual life, then Add some time to your prayer. You know, I see this pandemic that we're going through. I see it in a certain sense as a blessing in disguise. The fact that I'm able to spend this hour with you every morning, I really enjoy being with you. Hopefully you enjoy being with me. But I thoroughly enjoy being with you in the morning, the afternoon with those who speak Spanish. Thoroughly enjoy uh, teaching online, even though online I'm just looking at myself. And some of the 
little images behind me, you know. I prefer to be looking at you rather than looking at myself, but that's an act of penance to that. The fact that I have to look at myself for an hour, it's a real penance, but I'm putting up with it. Pray for me. But another blessing from this pandemic is I, I'm honest with you that I, I make my holy hour every morning. But now that we've got this pandemic, instead of, instead of an hour, I'm getting in close to an hour and a half. At least hour and 20, 25 minutes from 5.30, almost to 7 o'clock. Then Father Craig comes in and we pray the liturgy of the hour together in our private chapel. So I'm, I'm giving at least another 15, 10, 15 minutes more to my holy hour and I feel my friends I feel in this pandemic I'm given the exercise of the people but I feel that I'm actually praying more and I hope I'm praying better then at the end of the day we have a holy hour from 8 30 to 9 30 so there's a holy hour in the beginning of the day a holy hour at the end of the day is a good sandwich hmm? So what I'm saying is this, in, in a few words, is that you want to grow in your prayer life, you've got to give time. And see prayer. St. Teresa of Avila says that prayer is nothing more than spending a long time alone in silence with a friend that I know loves me. Don't you love that definition? That's Teresa of Avila. Prayer is nothing more than spending time alone and blocks of time. Spending time alone with a friend that I know loves us. And who is the friend that really loves us? That friend Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is, as we said before, il amigo que nunca falla. Look at it this way. Here, look at it this way, my friends. You have a good friend. And I was reading some of Thomas Aquinas today, and Thomas Aquinas says, a good friend is one of the best treasures we can have. If you have a really good friend, a solid spiritual friendship, that's like a, a, a brass iron wall. It's a pearl of infinite price. But So if you have a really good friend, I sometimes go off when the pandemic did not uh, exist, go off to a restaurant, and have a meal, have a glass of wine, and spend an hour or two hours with a couple of friends. And we're telling stories, we're talking about the lives of saints, we're talking about the spiritual exercises, we're telling jokes, bring a little bit of sports into it. I mean, really, we really hit it off. And I go, at the end of that time with my friends, I go back to my rectory and it's just filled with joy that I can spend time with like-minded people that are talking about noble things, spiritual things, the exercises, the Blessed Virgin Mary, our apostolic projects. We're on the same wavelength. So what I'm saying is that Teresa of Avila says, on a human level, you got a friend. What do you do with a friend? You shoot the breeze, you talk. You enjoy, you listen, you laugh, you tell stories. Jesus is the best friend. You have to learn to spend time with Jesus. What would happen if if I were with those friends, eat and run, grab onto the hamburger, I chow it down, and then I'm out the door in about three minutes. What type of friendship is that? I am, I'm afraid that we fall into the 
the complex of I don't have time. Here's a, now I'm probably going to scandalize you, but this song, this song, which is a classical song you probably heard before, basically it says sometimes what we do with God. And it's goodbye, hello, goodbye. I don't know why you say hello. I say goodbye. You say yes. I say no. You say go, and I say no, 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 ho, ho, ho. You say hello, and I say goodbye. You probably heard that. That's from the Beatles of the 60s. Now, hopefully I haven't scandalized you that in this spiritual exercises class, I'm singing you Beatles songs. But I'm singing that Beatles song for a purpose. Because in the modern society in which we live, we simply don't have time. It's a misnomer when we say we don't have time because we all have 24 hours, right? There's no person that can say, well, he's got 22 hours, he's got 26 hours. No, everyone who lives on planet Earth, the time is different. The time zone is different. We all have 24 hours. And, and it, it all depends on how do we, how do we use the time, how do we use the time that God gives to us? So if I could spend an hour, two hours, two and a half hours with a, with a friend or two talking, shooting the breeze, and really getting up afterward, being rejuvenated, reinvigorated. So you want to give time to God. So if you're, you're, you're skipping out on your holy hour, you're coming late, you're cutting corners, that's going to be that that will militate against you're doing these exercises remember saint ignatius annotation number five what is annotation number five annotation number five is the disposition that we must have if we want these exercises to be efficacious and here's the big college word for you What's a big college word? Magnanimity. Magnanimity means magna anima. Magna, great, anima, soul. A great soul, a generous soul that's willing to walk the extra mile. Remember the disciples on the road to Emmaus? We talked about them. I mean, they were walking with Jesus for seven miles. And once they finished, they arrived at their little house there, seven miles. They arrived at Emmaus. They didn't tell that stranger, oh, it was good to see you. Bye. No, they said, hey, come on. Why don't you spend more time with us? And they sat down, and that stranger sat down to him, and he ate some bread. He, he, he blessed it. He broke it. It's him and the breaking the bread. But they, they, they found that they couldn't spend enough time with Jesus Christ. So spending extra time. I've said this once, I'll say it in, that I'm a teacher. Right now I'm, I'm exercising my charism as a teacher. I'm a teacher for many, many years. So I can teach you, I can teach teenagers. I can teach children. I can teach. So I can teach you, I can inform your intellect. Okay? I can inform your intellect. I can give you the tools by which you can pray. But my friends, I cannot give you the desire to pray. That I can't. I cannot give you the desire to pray. I can give you the tools. I can give you the instruments. On a personal note, I feel one of the greatest gifts that God has given to me a huge gift is that ever since I was a little child, I always liked to pray. I've only met one person that has said that I really liked, I always liked to pray. Children, they don't like to pray. Teenagers, even less. Sometimes we as adults, uh, we, we don't really get into it. The only person that I ever remember saying, you know, since I was a little child, 
I always like to pray, was actually my mother. She said, yeah, son, you always like to pray. When I was a little child, coming home from school, I just like to pray. Maybe it's in the blood. What I'm saying to you, my friends, is this. Is I can teach you how to pray, but I cannot give you the desire to pray. We have a New York expression, I can take you, to, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't force the horse to drink the water. But you, you learn how to pray, you'll learn how to pray, my friends, by praying. How do you learn how to cook? By burning the papas, by practicing. How do you learn how to play the guitar? By practicing. How do you learn how to speak a language? By making a lot of mistake, mistakes at first. How do you learn how to pray? By praying. Practice makes perfect. And that brings me to my last suggestion on prayer. And it's this. When you're starting off your prayer period you're starting off your prayer period don't jump over the warm-up steps saint ignatius calls these the spiritual exercises the spiritual exercises yes you know if an athlete goes out to the playing field Baseball, football, whatever it might be. If that athlete has not warmed up before, then it's very easy that the athlete pulls a hamstring or sprains his ankle. And then he's out maybe for a month. For the simple reason he did not, he didn't warm up. The warm-up exercises are important for athletes to perform well. The same thing goes to say when we're doing our holy hour. Make sure that you get a good night's rest. Otherwise, if you don't get a good night's rest, then you're going to be falling asleep during your time. And Fulton Sheen says, never the hour for having your first cup of coffee. That's Fulton Sheen. I'd agree with him. Otherwise, you do your holy hour. As I said yesterday, I spoke about Fulton Sheen yesterday. You make your first holy hour the way the apostles made their first holy hour. How do the apostles make their first holy hour? By Yeah, they fell asleep three times. But then once you you are there in your oratory, you've got your beautiful images there, the Holy de Guadalupe, you've got Divine Mercy, you've got the Sacred Heart. Then you got to warm up. Because if you're jumping over the warm up, you're going to be pulling a spiritual muscle. You're going to be pulling a spiritual hamstring. <laughs> and so you place yourself, you place yourself in the presence of God. And then you recognize God is looking at you with great love. That's a key. I place myself in the presence of God, and God is looking at you with great love. How much imagining the love gaze of Jesus can help you to open up your heart to this conversation with the Lord? Yes. Imagine the gaze of Jesus on Matthew, the gaze of Simon Peter after he denied Jesus, that loving gaze of Jesus Christ, this beautiful image of the Sacred Heart. How can you possibly be looking at that and not be drawn to entering into this dialogue of prayer with the Lord? And then you pray to Mary. I said this at the very beginning of my talk, and I'll say it again. Pray to Mary. 
Let me tell you something I've been doing on a personal level. I think you're going to like this. Over the past three or four days, I've been thinking, how can we even go deeper in our conversations? And how can you people be more attentive in your prayers? This thought occurred to me. Mary, she is the queen. Mary is the queen of what? Mary is the queen of heaven. She's the queen of earth. She's the queen of the universe. She's the queen of stars. She's the queen of the planets. Mary is the in heaven. Mary is the queen of all the saints. She's the queen of the martyrs. She's the queen of confessors. She's the queen of, of virgins. She's the queen beauty of Carmel. Mary is the queen of all the angels. So that means she's the queen of the angels, the archangels, the principalities, the powers, the virtues, the demons, the cherubim and the seraphim, all the different choirs. What I did before my talk today is I prayed that Mar Mary, the Queen of Angels, would be with me when I'm giving my talks. Why? Because according to St. Thomas Aquinas, the angels, one of their functions is to give us a lot of light. That God would give me a lot of light, a lot of insight, a lot of depth, a lot of depth of thought. But also I was doing this. I was praying that all the angels in heaven would come to help you out. Yes, that was, that's was that been my prayer the past two or three days, that the angels would be with me. Not just my garden angel, but all the angels in heaven. You might feel, Father, that's too much. You're asking for too much. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I asking for too much? Maybe I'm asking for too little. Isn't Mary the queen of all the angels? In the queen, Mary has supremacy. The queen over a country, the queen with the king, are the most powerful persons in that kingdom. Jesus is king, Mary is queen. Mary commands. So I humbly beg the angel to be with me, to give me a lot of light, a lot of insight, a lot of strength, anecdotes, stories, a little bit of humor, biblical verse here, another biblical verse there, an insight into prayer. Definitely, these angels are going to open up the gateways so that there's deeper penetration of thought, deeper insight, deeper light but also i was praying for you so why didn't you do that next time you do your holy hour you you're asking the angels to be with you your guardian angel saint michael saint gabriel but all the angels to be with you and the angel they're going to be opening up your mind Remember when Jesus came, that Jesus opened up their mind to understanding of scriptures. Ask your angels that they'll open up your mind, that you'll be able to penetrate the depth of scripture. They, they are there they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you to simply ask them to come. But they respect your freedom. Then, my friends, in prayer, we're talking about prayer helps. Is after I begged Mary to be with you, I said at the beginning, and we spent about two minutes praying to the teacher. 
the teacher right now, the teacher of prayer is the Holy Spirit. I made a comment about Teresa of Avila. Teresa of Avila, who is the doctor of prayer. She was struggling through prayer. And she had spiritual direction, as I said. And the spiritual director was a young Jesuit priest said, you know, Teresa, one of the reasons why you're floundering so much, you're relying too much on yourself, and you have to, you have to rely more upon the Holy Spirit. So from that moment on, Teresa of Avila, she started to pray the Holy Spirit, and she noticed so many different insights that she never had before. Maybe some of you have seen statues of Teresa of Avila. One statue Teresa of Avila has, it's like a bird, a big white bird that's in her ear. What is that bird in the ear? That refers to what I just told you. The Jesuit told her to rely more upon the Holy Spirit. And then once she did that, praying the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, what does he do? He opens up your mind. He opens up your mind to understand the truth. And the truth will set you free. And then the Holy Spirit touches your heart. So Holy Spirit, He fills you with light and He fills your heart with great love. So my friends, this is a wonderful, wonderful enterprise that you're undertaking, the Spiritual Exercise Program. So I'd like to just give you a summary. And today you're going to be doing a repetition of the third sin. You're going to be doing a repetition of the sin of uh, Cain against Abel, which you can find in Genesis chapter 4. Read through the Genesis chapter 4 and read through my commentary. I give a lot of ins to understand that passage all the more. And then be open to God. Be open to God. Spiritual exercises, your holy hour, your hour of power, as we said about Fulton Sheen, is the most important time of your day with the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So remember the five points of the day. Number one, remember what I said? Read on prayer. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the fourth part, is a spiritual masterpiece. Spiritual masterpiece. This is one of the greatest writings in the history of Catholicism on prayer at the fourth part, the last part of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Number Remember the bird. Remember the bird. Remember the bird. Remember the crow. The crow could not fly because the crow had a wing that was broken. For us to fly high in the spiritual life and not to be turtles, but rather to be eagles, we must have the two wings. And those two wings are prayer and penance. What did Jesus do in the desert? He spent 40 days in prayer but also Jesus spent 40 days in silence and in penance and in fasting third is rather the uh, third is you have to have a director if you don't have a spiritual director we all have blind spots and we cannot advance in our life we arrive at a certain point without having an adequate spiritual director that's helping us get a spiritual director have thanks be to God and recognize that God does speak through different channels through the human channel of the spiritual director I have one you should also have one the next is find time friends like to spend time together they enjoy each other's presence you should have a real desire to spend time with God that's what prayer is Prayer is spending time with God. Prayer is spending time with your best friend, and your best friend is Jesus Christ. 
And the last thing which I just finished explaining is warm up, ask your angels to come in. Ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to be with you and to pray with you. And very important, ask the Holy Spirit. Beg the Holy Spirit, who is the interior master, to open up your mind and your heart to the love of God. So may God bless all of you, and I hope that you all persevere and become saints, because God wants all of you to become great saints. So I will give you my blessing. You pray for me, and I'll pray for you. The Lord with you. Through the intercession of Mary and the angels and saints, May God bless all of you in a special way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.